Welcome back for the third of the three uh, classes on boarding to get started in the VATSIM Jacksonville RTAC. This will be about the VRC scope setup. Uh, you'll want to watch this video right before your face-to-face uh, -face class with your mentor or instructor so it's fresh in your mind. Uh, but we'll move right along. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the approved clients, how to set up VRC, frequency voice server setup, logging into Sweatbox, and some of the hotkeys. We'll go over these again uh, if, when you're in Sweatbox and make sure that you're comfortable with all of this before you actually go online using this, the client software. So the approved radar clients, right now it's a virtual radar client called VRC. It's probably the most widely used one. It's very flexible. It can be set up to be very realistic or it can set up to be almost in a game environment. Uh, <clears throat> because of the... Uh, the progression of our various servers and uh, audio clients. The virtual radar client is slowly going to be sunset over the next year or two, uh, but all the features that are in VRC will be moved over to one of the other clients. Uh, for now, it's still a <clears throat> the favorite client for training. It was developed by Ross Carlson, who's responsible for a lot of the VATSIM software programs. He was a real-world controller, which is why all these appear so realistic. Uh, I'll put this link at the bottom for how to download this, where to download the software so you can get to it. Yeah, you should have the software downloaded and installed uh, before you start your sweat box. Uh, all of the uh, documentation for how to use it is uh, also available uh, at the same website of Metacraft. Uh, there are a lot of hotkeys. Uh, there's a single page or a couple page uh, document that has just those hotkeys on them. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to want to uh, probably print that out and then use a, a highlighter to highlight the ones you're going to use all the time. Uh, because there's some of these hotkeys you're going to use routinely. But, uh, you're only going to use a few of them when you start out in clearance delivery and uh, ground. But as you work your way up through tower and tracon uh, or even en route, you'll use them quite a bit. And of course, you'll use more of them. But by the time you get that experience, it'll be second nature to do so. Uh, VSTARS is another approved client. This is the one that's going to probably become the workhorse of VATSIM uh, as Ross moves a lot of the features from VRC into VSTARS and starts to deprecate uh, VRC, like I said, over the next year or two. Uh, VRAM is what people use for in route control. <clears throat> and uh, you won't be using that until you've gone through and gotten your major for for departure and approach controlling at Tracon. So it'll be a while before you'll be downloading and using VRAM. And I don't really recommend you start with VSTARS now because uh, the features that are in v VRC are not yet in VSTARS. And VSTARS is a fantastic uh, piece of software for Tracon controlling and even for tower and ground. But it's not... Uh, quite as easy to use when you're brand new and still trying to figure out how to do controlling. So my suggestion is that you uh, stick with VRC for now uh, and then uh, go to, v to VSTARS uh, as you get more experience being a controller. So the VRC setup, uh, we'll talk about these, file, these files here. Uh, as the facility engineer for Jacksonville RTAC, <clears throat> I'm responsible that these files stay current and you can download them from the website. Uh, the assistant uh, facility engineer is Howard, and he does a tremendous amount of work maintaining this as well as the VSTARS and VRAM uh, files. So if you have any questions about the setup or anything that's an issue, uh, you can email us at fe at zjx.rtac.org or afe at zjx rtech.org and we'll investigate the issue. You can also just post a message in uh, the Discord chat and we will see it. So routinely this will install to uh, your your main drive program files slash at 6 slash VRC and it will also create a documents library uh, named VRC for wh where the support files are going to go. You can change this. Uh, it'll work just fine. Uh, I actually use my uh, data drive, which is my D drive uh, for installing my program. And I actually, uh, my the subfolder for my documents is actually symlinked as well to D. So even though I created it in C, it's actually going to D. 
uh, for me. And if you're familiar with how to set up your folders and subfolders to do that, it works fine. If you're not familiar with how to do that, uh, I do not recommend you mess around with the locations of the software. Uh, because if you do that, then things, you know, if you have to change something, it's hard to figure it out where it goes. So we're going to show you how to do the the support files that are needed, the ZJX master sector file, that's the file that has all the current nav data in it. Uh, it has all of the pictures uh, on the map for the video maps and the lines and drawings. Uh, the master alias file is uh, the file that allows you to send uh, additional commands into VRC uh, that insert text like uh, an auto text into the into the text system. And then the master POF file is the one that uh, has the communications and designs so that you can, uh, when you get farther along controlling, uh, it'll, it, it's the one that puts the list of controllers on your screen and gives them appropriate names and things when people log on. All of them are available by going to our website, clicking on the documents page, and then uh, you just go to the, to the tab marked VRC. So when you do uh, and you click on any of the documents, there's a, there's a download uh, icon next to each one of them. And each one of the files will have a modified date so you can see how recent it is. Uh, the files will also have the ARAC uh, it was created in. Uh, for the master sector file, that's indicating the nav data that's inside the sector file. Uh, for the alias and POF file, it's just indicating when it was uploaded to the website because the uh, alias text file and the PO file don't need to be updated as often. Uh, I get into the habit of just doubt of updating all three of them on every cycle. And you're going to put them in that newly created document folder called ZJX folder. Uh, and you can put it anywhere actually and it'll work fine because you're going to manually uh, import them into the software by going to the folder where you saved it. So after they're all done, you're going to open, make sure that you, uh, on VRC, right-click VRC, choose the Properties button, and in the Compatibility tab, check the button that says Run as Administrator. It does not install as Administrator by default. And the reason you're going to do that is because uh, the key command or the button you use for transmitting will not work if, uh, if, you're, if you didn't do Administrator. So like a lot of other uh, programs, if you want the hotkey to work when you're not on the focus of the software, it has to be running as administrator. And that's true of a lot of programs. So the first thing you're going to see when you get on there actually is just one label that's going to say default. So you're not going to have a choice. You're going to have to choose to and click OK. And when you do that, it's going to be pretty much empty. Uh, that's fine. These other ones, uh, the demonstration slide on here shows that the, somebody has already saved some other profiles, and we'll show you about that shortly. So when you open it up and it's pretty much empty, uh, you're going to go to get the alias and POF file. You'll find it in the settings menu uh, choice, and then just click the select button, navigate to the folder that it's in, click on the file, click OK, and it sucks it in. Uh, <clears throat> And then you're going to do this same thing uh, for your uh, sector file. So it didn't show it here, <laughs> of course not. But uh, to the, the, when you open the file button, one of the choices is to load a sector file. So you're going to do the same thing and do file, open the sector file, navigate to the, where you put it, click on it, and it'll load. Uh, You'll know it'll load because all of a sudden this black screen will have some stuff in it. Don't worry about what it's, it looks like or where the map is located. That doesn't matter to you uh, right now. We'll take care of that during setup. So the next thing is the hotkeys. I recommend that you don't mess with the hotkeys. Uh, <clears throat> however, the aircraft select key is a uh, left tab. If you have a numeric keypad that's separate from your regular keyboard, on the right, you know, a lot of people have that on the right side, then it's very convenient to use the plus button on that separated keypad as your aircraft select key. 
So only if you have a standalone numeric keypad to the right of your regular keypad, a right keyboard, I would go ahead and change the aircraft select key to the plus uh, key on that t uh, numeric keypad. Leave the controller select key alone. Uh, although here again, if you have that large numeric keypad to the right, you could use the minus key for your controller select key. Frankly, you're never going to use the controller select key. Uh, it's just not as convenient as other ways to select a controller. So uh, it doesn't really matter what you put there, I suppose. The push to talk key, uh, this is somewhat limited in VRC. It can only be one of the uh, shiftable keys. So alt, control, shift, that sort of thing. Uh, the right control is convenient for me uh, because I use a headset that has a push button on it. I map it to, uh, I map the push button uh, to one of the shift keys and then I use the push button on my headset. <clears throat> and all you do is you, you click in it and then you just touch whatever key it is you want to use. You can always come back and change it if you don't like the way you set it up. So this is when we talked about, remember we talked about that airspace and visibility settings. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, You want to make sure the visibility range is appropriate for your position. And as you're, since you're starting out uh, with clearance and delivery, go ahead and slide this uh, slider bar to the left until the, uh, the nautical miles reach 20. Uh, we will fill, help you fill in the arrival fields so you can leave this just saying, uh, KJAX for now. Just put those in for the arrival and departure. What this does is it populates a list of aircraft who are arriving or departing based on what's in their flight plan. Uh, so you can quickly see the aircraft that are arriving or departing. Now, how far out can you see the aircraft that are arriving? That's defined by your visibility range. So if you're in delivery and ground, they'll be pretty close, 20 nautical miles or so before you uh, will see it on your list. But of course, everybody departing will be on the field, so you'll see them as soon as they get a flight plan. Uh, the transition altitude in the United States, that's where you change from uh, from your, your altimeter setting to the standard 299 or 2. In the United States, it's always uh, 18,000 feet or flight level 180, so just leave that alone. Uh, you, if you're using VRC in, in Europe, you would change it. but we're in the United States, so you're just going to leave that alone. Same thing with the radar floor. There's no need to change that, so just leave it at zero. When you're all done, click Apply and click OK. On the radar settings mode, <clears throat> since we're going to be learning delivery and ground first, you're going to click Settings, Radar Mode, and you're going to set it to ground for now. Uh, you'll learn the other ones and what they do later. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so now we load the sector file again. Go to Documents, VRC, and uh, this is what I do as well. I put uh, subfolders in the free on the RTAX I'm in and move and upload the sector file. Now, the sector file will update every 28 days. Uh, so what I do is I download the new sector file, and then I rename it a very generic zjx.sct2. And so as they update every cycle, I just delete the old one, <clears throat> I drag the new one into this folder, and I rename it zjx.sct2. By doing that, I don't have to go back and reload the uh, sector file each time the cycle changes. I don't have to change to a different file. So it, when it loads, it'll look for the same name, it's in the same place, and everything's hunky-dory. It just goes ahead and loads the new sector file that you, that you copied in there. Now you'll notice that the sector file has a has an extension of SCT2, uh, and that's what it's looking for. In the early days of VRC, the initial file was called SCT, but as, when uh, Ross updated the software, it got a new extension because it had more data in it. So your scope should be pretty visible now. You should be seeing stuff in the black screen behind you. Uh, the view button has a ton of stuff in it that you can do. Feel free to experiment. You don't have to be connected to do this. Uh, typically, we leave all the labels turned on uh, because they only display when that uh, particular fix is turned on. So it's just easier to leave them turned on. Uh, and then uh, you can turn on and off the airports and the runways and the center lines and the fixes, etc. Uh, feel free to do that and experiment.
uh, set it up the way you like. Uh, most people leave everything off except for the VORs uh, <clears throat> because there's so many fixes and so many airports that they sort of clutter up the screen and there's and nobody uses NDBs in the real world or in VATSIM, so it's not much point to turn them on. You can also turn on the frequencies. They are built into the data. Uh, I'm sort of proud of that because it took a long time to get the program to do that for me. Uh, but if you needed to know what the VOR frequency is, if, there, if, a, uh, if a pilot asks what's the frequency for a VOR, because they apparently don't know how to read a chart, uh, you can just click it here and turn it on, and then you'll be able to see the frequency right next to that VOR. Uh, because you're going to be working close to the ground uh, at the airfield, uh, the diagrams of the airfields are in a section called Regions. Uh, the the text that's on there that shows the the runway numbers and the taxiway numbers and information about where the FBO is the tower that sort of thing those are under the the section called static text geography is exactly what it says it shows the coastlines and significant ri uh, rivers and that sort of things uh, and it's nice to turn that on it's not very invasive on the screen it doesn't get in your way and it does help you quite a bit in uh, relating what you see on the screen to what you'll see on any charts. Uh, so set it up the way you see here with the checkboxes, and then uh, go ahead and click on diagrams. So what we do is uh, we actually manually create diagrams for video maps and for a lot of the airfields. And that's done with a combination of the PDFs from the FAA <clears throat> and uh, using uh, AutoCAD software. And, and then when we build it, you'll see it in this picture here that we designed for you. <clears throat> the actual appearance of the diagrams dialog will be different because this is an old slide, but it has the same sort of uh, orientation where you'll see the various uh, SIDS or uh, departure uh, procedures and the STARS, which are the arrival procedures. And there's no place else to put it, so all of the special use airspace will be uh, in the diagrams as well. And we don't normally use them in VATSIM, so they're turned off by default. But you will want the airport diagrams turned on. Uh, it's fun to have the Disney TFR turned on. <clears throat> and then uh, to start, you'll want to turn the deltas on. Uh, and we'll talk about what those are during training, but it's just easier to turn them on for now. Uh, when you get to the TRACON controlling and NROUTE controlling, you, you'll probably not have these turned on, or you'll turn them on only when you need them. So uh, you can zoom in and find the airport. The easy way to find the Jacksonville airport is to uh, click in the bottom text entry bar that's at the very bottom of the RC, and just type the command dot center, and then the ICAO for the field, which is KJAX, Kilo Julia Alpha X-ray and it'll immediately zoom the uh, entire map so that it's centered on the screen on the Jacksonville Airport. And then zooming in or zooming out is just a matter of using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Uh, if you set everything up ahead of time the way we said, this is the picture that you want to see for the Jacksonville Airport. So the only other thing you need is to turn on the other dialog windows that are useful to have when you're controlling. Uh, the ones you need routinely is the controllers and chat and the arrivals and departures. The weather panel isn't necessary for you if you're only controlling one airport. The weather panel is used to list the METARs of a series of airfields. But if you're only controlling at Jacksonville, you really don't need that particular weather panel because the weather will be on a button up here at the top of your screen and you'll be able to see it all the time. Anyway, uh, if you have a wide screen, we recommend putting these panels on the right side of the screen. Just drag them over there. Uh, when you save, when you go to log out, it's going to ask you to save your session profile, and you're going to give it a name if you haven't already, uh, and it will save the locations of these various uh, dialogues. <clears throat> so, finally, it gets time to log in as an observer. You're going to put ZJX because that's the R tech you're in. Then you're going to put your, the initial, your first and last name initials, and another, an underscore and OBS. That's going to be your call sign for now. Uh, 
you're going to put your real name. It should match what you put in for your VATSIM ID. Uh, you are not required to do that, however. You can put just your first name. You can put your common nickname. You are allowed to have a little bit of uh, leniency on what goes into the real name field. Uh, however, you can't make something crazy in there. You can't put King Todd or Scooby-Doo or something. You need to put uh, your, your name there. Uh, you're going to be in the position at the facility you're going to be in is observer, and your current rating is observer. So they, they're going to match. Your certificate ID is your VATSIM ID, and your password is your VATSIM password. <laughs> the server you're going to be at depends on where you live. Uh, most of you will probably be on the eastern side of the country, east of the Mississippi. So if you're east of the Mississippi, use USA hyphen east. If you're living, if you're physically located west of the Mississippi, use USC, USA hyphen west. Uh, but I think the vast majority of us are probably all living on the east side of the Mississippi. Uh, if you follow the setup correctly, you'll be able to see uh, when you log in, you'll see a bunch of, of uh, data tags. And right now, because he zoomed out, you're seeing all of the static text as well, which sort of clutters up the screen. Uh, but you'll see the airplanes in Vatson that are flying right now, and you'll see the data tags, and we will teach you how to read those data tags. Uh, if there's any other controllers online, they will show up in your controllers and chat dialog, and they'll have a code uh, as well as their position and their frequency. Uh, we'll talk about how to use that code in another class. Any aircraft that are, so this aircraft is, uh, you're, if this person is in the observer position and they set it up for 300 miles, uh, so they can see that Southwest 2109 will be arriving at Jacksonville and they're 291 miles out. Frequency and voice server setup. Again, this is a little bit different now than uh, the slides might show, but we'll go over it anyway. You're going to click on the tools and open up the comms panel. In the comms panel, you're going to see this blank screen. Uh, click on the any one of these hyphens, start at the top. That's what I usually do. And when you do, it'll open up this uh, set of uh, text fields at the bottom. P the position name is going to be <clears throat> the position for that controller position. And the frequency is going to be the frequency for that position. How do you know what they are? Well, again, if you look to the SOP, you'll know what they are because it tells you right in the SOP. So type the position name exactly as it appears in the SOP and type the frequency exactly as it appears in the SOP. Notice that in VRC, you have to fill out all the spaces. So if it's 127.0, you need to do 127.000 because the software requires that you fill all the, num the numeric positions out. You do not need to put anything in Vox Server or Vox Channel. Those are now deprecated and no longer used in the software. So here, you're going to start with Jack's Ground or Jack's Delivery. We typically have you use Jack's Ground to train because most people uh, do their first over the shoulder with both delivery and ground accomplished. So you're going to put in the position name is Jax underscore ground and the frequency for that. Uh, and when you click uh, save changes, they will it'll appear at the top of the screen in the in the box that you opened. Now you have to click the primary button here <clears throat> for the position you're in. When you do that, it will also check the transmit and receive checkboxes. As I mentioned earlier, this is only for texting back and forth. It's not for audio. Uh, since we're not using audio on VRC, the headset and speaker checkboxes are no longer operational. You can ignore them completely. So after you've done that, in order to hear the audio, you need to open up the uh, audio server the software, the client. That's called Audio for VATSIM. Now, I'll put this in the uh, description links for this one so you can get to it. Download it and just let it install by default wherever it does. Uh, when you do that, it's gonna, you're going to start and click the settings button. And just like VRC, you're going to set up your, uh, your VATSIM ID and your password. And you're also going to set up the uh, audio input and outputs. We didn't mention that in uh, VRC, but when you go to the general tab, or go to the settings tab and look at it, 
there will be a choice for audio devices and you can use that choice in VRC to set up your headset to use the speakers and headset that you want to use. So after you set that up, and, and it'll it'll make you do that when you first start, it'll say it's not set up yet. Uh, after you do that, then it's going to uh, close again, and you and then you're going to click on the connect button, and you have to have your VRC connected to the server before you connect on Audio for Vatsim, because all Audio for Vatsim is doing is looking at your VRC uh, software in order to make the connection. <clears throat> So you can see right now that uh, someone was helping a new controller who signed into Jackson Ground. Uh, actually, I think what this is, is I think uh, the ATM created this uh, slide for us. And so you see uh, his uh, ATM, the, the staff have special positions. They, don't, they can't transmit, but they can receive on just about anything that they want to. And then uh, Jack's ground would be, all you would see is Jack's ground. That's the only one that you would see here. And you would click on the transmit and receive and make them green so that you can transmit and you can receive. When you're observing, only click the trans, only click the receive side. Do not click the transmit side. Now, if you're observing and you don't have a frequency, you can manually create a frequency. So you can click the plus button and you can put in uh, you know, jacks underscore ground, even though you're an observer, uh, and it'll populate the frequency, and then you can click the receive. So even if it doesn't show up here, you can manually enter it and have uh, the system uh, bring in that position and frequency for you. Uh, by the way, you won't use anything on the right side additional transport receivers. That's for the facility engineer like me, so just ignore everything on the right side. So when you're all done, or, or may, what I do is I do this when I make any changes, because otherwise I forget. Uh, you're going to save the session profile as. Now here they said Jack's ground. Honestly, you really only need to have one profile per airfield. When I first started, I created a profile for every position at every airfield, spent an hour doing it, and discovered I didn't need it. Uh, you really only need one because it's pretty easy to reconfigure the software, especially between delivery and ground. Uh, there's almost no changes that you can make on the settings. <clears throat> so, And then when you get to tower, you're going to discover that there's very few settings you're going to change again. So you can really use one profile for all three. Uh, but if you want to have a profile for each of them, then feel free to do so. Each time you have another profile, you're going to have to do all the settings set up. Uh, particularly if you if you try to create a new profile so and then it'll be saved on this list so the next time you open up a VRC you'll see default and you'll see Jack's ground uh, and again and if you what I recommend is if you decide to do one for each of the positions that's fine for example if you decide to do one for tower uh, open your jacks ground first so that you have a basic set of uh, positions in there and then make the changes you want for tower and then save the session profile with a new name called jacks underscore twr if you uh by the way if you if you open up the default after you've set up jacks ground you're going to get that blank screen and have to start all over Logging on to Sweatbox. So there's almost no difference between Sweatbox and the, the actual live server. You simply take the drop down and choose Sweatbox. <clears throat> Sometimes you will not see Sweatbox as one of the available servers. If that happens, uh, let any mentor instructor know. It's because you're missing one other uh, a small personal file in your uh, documents folder and we'll just give it to you. And you just, all you do is copy it in there, restart VRC, and you'll be able to see Sweatbox. Uh, and we will go through all of that on your one-on-one -on -one session before you start observing. We'll make sure that you have everything you need. So what happens in Sweatbox? Well, we can manually create airplanes, lots of them, as you can see on this picture. Uh, this, is, this is zoomed out for Jacksonville, but there's probably 20 or 30 airplanes crammed into the airport down here. And there's a whole bunch of airplanes set up to fly into a arrive at Jacksonville International Airport. And when we unpause the simulator, 
these all start flying in and you start working the ones going out. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the ones coming in, obviously, if you're doing delivery and ground. Uh, we, will, we will not make them activate, but uh, that's how you will practice. Don't go into Sweatbox, by the way, unless you're with an instructor or mentor. <clears throat> so to create the server option, uh, oh good, he put this in here. I will add this to this link so you can get it. Uh, grab this file and drag it into your VRC folder. You'll know where to put it because there will be another file in that folder that says, uh, instead of myservers.txt, it'll just say servers.txt. Uh, so whatever folder has your servers.txt file, that's where you're going to put the myservers.txt. And what it does is VRC reads the servers.txt, and then it goes and adds any uh, add-on uh, servers that we created from the myservers.txt file. Uh, <clears throat> VRC hotkeys, as I said, you, uh, hopefully you've already got the command reference from the Metacraft website and you probably printed it, or you have a PDF up that you can use. Uh, but you're going to use this to learn what the hotkeys are, and you're going to learn the hotkeys by using them uh, when you practice in Sweatbox. So the, the first three you're going to want to know are these. Uh, <clears throat> the, the three you're going to use all the time is your aircraft select, which, again, if you have that numpad, you'll be at plus. Uh, if you don't, you can leave it at tab or whatever you want to use. But you're going to use the aircraft select uh, key a lot. So make it something convenient. And, and don't make it a shift button. Make it one of the regular keys. Uh, you're going to use function key 6 a lot. And you're going to use function key 9 a lot uh, as a delivery and ground controller. So those are th those really are the only uh, three you need to know. You're not going to be turning the, the data tag on and off routinely uh, when you're in delivery or ground, but you will when you start doing tower and uh, approach and departure. Uh, and that's it. So if you've gone through all these and you've uh, set up your VRC and you downloaded that one myservers.txt file, you're ready to get on to uh, a session with a mentor or instructor. They'll run through everything, make sure you got it set up right, answer any questions you have. Uh, there is no quiz or test afterwards. Once he says you're good to go, you can go ahead and get online as an observer, uh, center in any field. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to go somewhere where somebody's already controlling so you can listen to them. And by the way, that is within the Jacksonville RTAC. If you want to observe at a different RTAC, uh, speak to us ahead of time. Uh, typically, we do not uh, observe uh, other RTACs when you're a student just starting out. Thank you, and we'll see you on the air.